I, I, I'd go back to my time working in advertising as a, um, as a copywriter, which is uh, how it came up in advertising. And I always figured the job of the copywriter was to write copy that could be interpret, interpreted one way alone and not misinterpreted in any way. And a famous failure is, you know, uh, who was it, Ford or Chevy who had the car Nova, and they took it down to South America. They're like, well, Nova, it's a great car here in America. And they took it down, and it turns out Nova means won't go. And so it was a horrible um, communication fail, a language fail, branding fail. And, um, and the job of the copywriter is to guard against that. And so that's something that I've thought about and think about a lot. One day I was uh, driving home uh, from somewhere and I was dictating a message to somebody, a text via Siri, um, a voice recognition software on Apple products, and uh, NPR was playing and Siri was still transcribing and getting things wrong. And I'm like, look, there it is. Sort of a perfect representation of the difficulty of communication. And in the digital realm, of course, there was this promise that, uh, you know, this digital technology was going to make things easier, going to make communication clearer uh, and minimize the mistakes and the miscommunications, all that shit. And of course, didn't happen at all. It's almost the opposite. So, uh, you know, with that Siri transcription, I think that might have been the first piece for this exhibition uh, about uh, the difficulties of communication. You know, I started uh, in the fine art world as a painter. Uh, I was painting animals, mostly, um, you know, creating metaphors, uh, using the animals allegorically to uh, just sort of represent a thought or point of view or whatever. Uh, and eventually, uh, if you're doing that, you start doing uh, sort of environmental, on environmental themes. And then if you're doing environmental themes, you're really, in essence, working on political themes. Uh, and then I started doing more and more political stuff and started doing those historical markers, um, uh, blue, the blue and yellow markers that you see around. Uh, but instead of having uh, text about something that happened 100 years ago, it's contemporary uh, political and social issues, um, subverting that form to uh, add the weight of historical importance to current events. Um, and that's, te that's text art, you know. It's con considered conceptual art and text-based art. Uh, and from there, it's just a slippery slope into all this stuff through Siri and, and who really opened the door to this current body of work. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's been my life for decades now. And I guess I've probably had 15 solo shows and over 100 group shows. I go to most of the openings, I go to every opening of a solo show. And it's, it's really so satisfying. You know, I've been working on this body of work for like three or four years. Um, and when the show was scheduled, I uh, sped up my production. I was like, I want that, I want that, and I want that. Uh, and then you guys came, and Chris ultimately selected what he, what he wanted. But still, there's, I think, 17 pieces in there. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud. I'm really, it's, you know, to see them together, it's so sort of leaned up against the wall of my studio which is what I call my dining room, um, it's really a blast. It's so much fun, and it's a moment for most artists, me included, I think, to uh, step back and feel proud of what they've done. So, and the reception was good, and people, uh, people love to come up and say, oh, this one's my favorite, or that one's my favorite, uh, and that's great. It's really fun. At 25, um, I was casting about and trying a bunch of new stuff. Uh, at some point after that, I thought, oh, I've got a style. Uh, and then at some point after that, I started casting about again, trying new stuff. And I, I really in, enjoy that. And, and a, crit, a critic came to a show. I had a show of, of uh, work called After the 11th. Uh, it was a year after 9-11. And a, a friend who's a critic came by, and it was sculptures and photography and installations, all kinds of stuff. 
he said, yeah, you know, it seems a little like dilettante-ish, you know, do all these different things. And I was like, huh, I'm not sure, that doesn't sound good. And I looked it up and it meant uh, somebody who dabbles in all kinds of different styles. Uh, and after like a week or so of worrying, like, oh my God, am I dil dilettante? I was like, yes, I am. I really enjoy dabbling in different kinds of things. Um, and, and I would say it's a, a serious dabbling, uh, hopefully. Um, but I did all kinds of work for this show that I'd never done before. And that's really, really interesting.